Good morning, Chapel Hill. Good morning. Good morning. It is such a beautiful morning to be together. I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping in sanctuary with us, and I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping online with us. This truly is the day the Lord has made, and we are thankful to be together. So, just a reminder that our senior pastor, Pastor Jeff, is finishing out his sabbatical, and he will be back in the office tomorrow and back in worship next Sunday. So we look forward to having him back among us. Dr. J is still on vacation with his family, and he will also be back next Sunday. And we are thrilled this morning to welcome our district superintendent, Chali, with us. Will you give him a Chapel Hill welcome? He is a longtime friend to our congregation. His wife, Jill, was the associate pastor here for a time, and we love his family. And I promise you will be blessed by the sermon that he is bringing us today. If you are a first-time guest, I want to invite you to stop at the Welcome Center on your way out so that we can greet you personally and give you a sweet gift by means of saying thank you for being with us. Now, if you are able, I invite you to stand and find a way to greet those around you in Christian love. Good morning, Chapel Hill. I'm Pastor Jen, and I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. I want to invite you to do a couple of things now so that you'll be ready to fully engage in the worship service. First, go ahead and gather your bread and your juice so that you are ready to participate with us in receiving communion in a little while. And second, consider lighting a candle as a way to visibly remind yourself that God is there with you. Finally, when our worship service has ended, I want to invite you to go check out our website and there you'll find a place to sign up for our e-newsletter so that you can keep up with everything going on in the life of the church. You can also submit a prayer request and you'll find a way to give online. I want to thank you again for worshiping with us this morning, and I pray that this time together is a blessing to your soul. Then we can enter together into God's presence this morning. So let's lift our voices together this morning as we sing. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go.
Mountain high, valley low, I'm going to sing wherever I go. Amen. Amen. God, we are so thankful that you have always been good, that you are a good God. We thank you for the constant grace that you give us, God. We thank you that you are always with us. We thank you that you will never leave us, never forsake us. We thank you for being the great God that you are. And that no matter what language, we sing it in, God. You know the words. You know what we are singing. That you are great. So be with us this morning as we sing some more. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our Above. Yeah. 
Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, you are truly great, and we come today giving you thanks and praise for all that is ours in Christ. We worship you and call upon you to speak to us because we need to hear words of guidance and encouragement and care. Encourage us, Lord, by your spirit with peace and hope and challenge us to assume the place that you've given us in the work of your kingdom according to the gifts you've given, the resources you've given us. Help us to be responsive to your leading and meet the need of every soul that is here today. Whatever miracle is needed, whatever answer to prayer is needed according to your love and your perfect will. We come today with our trust in you, seeking you with all of our hearts and praising you for all that you are to us. In Jesus' name, amen. be seated. Amen. As we prepare to move into a most sacred moment, I want to light the candle as a reminder that the Holy Spirit is in our midst. And I want to invite Tenley and Andrew and Abigail and Charlotte and Mason and, of course, Hayden to come forward. You guys want to line up around here? It is such a blessing to celebrate this special moment with your family. And what a gift to have all the extended family and friends here with us, not only to celebrate Hayden's baptism, but we get to hear Abigail bring a beautiful special music here shortly. So it is a very special day for your family. So congregation, we want you to participate in this sacred time. You are Hayden's people. You're her faith family. So we want you to follow along on the screens with us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and we're given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. In other words, this is an incredibly sacred moment where we get to celebrate the incredibly sacred gift that Miss Hayden is and the amazing love that God has now and always for Hayden. 
So, Tinley and Andrew, until Hayden is old enough to answer for herself, I'll ask you guys to answer on her behalf. These are the traditional questions. They are not our own. They are questions that saints have been asked through the ages before baptism. So, Tenley and Andrew, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? If so, please say we do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say we do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in him, in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say we do. do. Will you nurture Miss Hayden? Yes, Hayden is participating too. Will you nurture Hayden in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say we do. do. (laughs) And congregation, like I said, you are Hayden's people. You're her faith family. So do you, as Christ's body, the church, Reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Please say, we do, absolutely. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Hayden, now before you, in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Hayden with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. Amen. We are not baptizing Hayden into this local church. We are baptizing her into the body of Christ and as a way of embodying that truth, I invite you to now stand as you're able and let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Tinley and Andrew, when this precious gift came into our world, you gave her the name of, and please say it together. Hayden Francis. Hayden Francis. And is she named after anyone? Uh, Her middle name is my grandmother's middle name. Oh, how special. Hayden Francis. I love it. All right, let's see if I can splash water like Pastor Jeff. I like how Tenley kind of backed up a little bit. She knows the drill, yes. Oh, God, we thank you for this gift of water. We thank you for your Holy Spirit as you pour it out, work in and through the sacred time that you might bless Hayden, that she might always know of your love and grace for her. 
Amen and amen. Miss Hayden, are you going to come see me? What do you think? Do we have stranger danger? Hi. Hello. Oh, you are so pretty. Okay, we're just going to spend the rest of the service like this. <laughs> Will you come out here and meet your people? Oh, this is your faith family. What do you think? What do you think? I think they like you. They're waving at you. All right, I guess we need to move on. Here, I'll turn this way so Mommy and Daddy can see it. Hayden Francis, child of the living God, I baptize you in the name of the Father Ooh. and of the Son. Oh, is that cold? And of the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. Let me grab that towel, Hayden. Okay, here, let's dry that off a little bit. There you go. Oh, goodness. Oh. All right, who gets her? Daddy? All right. And it is tradition. <laughs> Mommy gets her. It is tradition for the newly baptized to also be anointed. And this is a way of symbolically sealing the baptism. So it is my privilege, Hayden Francis, child of God, I mark you with the sign of the cross that you might always know how much Jesus loves you. I anoint your hands that you might always serve him. I anoint your feet that you might always follow him. I anoint your heart, precious, that you might always know how much he loves you. I anoint your lips, precious, that you might always speak of your love for him. I anoint the whole of your life, Hayden Francis, that you might always know that God will never leave you. Amen and amen. And Tinley and Andrew, it is our tradition to give you the oil that you might take it and on the good days when you are praising God, you might get it out and anoint yourselves, anoint Hayden, Mason, Charlotte, and Abigail. You guys have an important role in loving and raising your little sister. And on the hard days that you might get it out and anoint yourselves as a reminder that God is always with you. Now let's turn and let Dr. Moore sing a blessing over your precious family. This child has been baptized in Christ. Hallelujah. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you for this precious family. We thank you that you have begun a good work in Hayden, and we pray that you would see it through to completion. God, we pray that you would bless Tenley and Andrew, Abigail, Charlotte, Mason, and Hayden, their whole family, that they might always and everywhere know of your love for them. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Congregation, our applause is a way of celebrating with Hayden and her family. Bless you guys. Thank you. Bless you. I invite you now to hear a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned 
And seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Abigail, I am thrilled to invite you to come up and share your beautiful special music with us. in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every Every love. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say. now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. Oh, you say
Amen, amen. What a beautiful song and well done. And what a tribute to your sister and to your family and to this church. Oh, indeed, God is amazing, the loving God who reaches not only to the wise who are 99, but who also reaches to those who are young as the beautiful baby here. I just love that we in the United Methodist Church do not get in between God's amazing grace that reaches to all of the people, regardless of their age. Thank you to the parents for this act of faith, trusting God to walk with you and raise up this child to follow Jesus Christ. My name is Kalabai Chali. I go by Chali. I know some of you. I can see Linda there in San and I used to attend worship here when my wife served here uh, with Pastor Jeff. I uh, serve now as a district superintendent. My really job is uh, to really support the pastors and the churches uh, in our district, which is called the South Central Kansas District. We have 70 church, uh, 76 churches and 70 pastors. So I ask for your prayers as our pastors uh, lead and as they rest and as they uh, guide our churches. Um, it's a privilege to work. I would also just say if uh, someone asked me after the first service, I'm originally from Zambia. I grew up in the Congo and I went to school in Zimbabwe. So if you mention one of those countries that I'm from there, no offense, it's all fine. But today I'm here to bring the message. As a superintendent, I don't get to preach that often. But I mentioned to another friend that it seems like I'm covering all the hills. Last Sunday I preached at Rose Hill, and today I'm preaching at Chapel Hill. And a couple of weeks or three weeks from now, I'll preach, I'll preach at College Hill. So I'll, by the time the month is over, I'll have covered all the hills, uh, so I'm so grateful to be here to, pr uh, to preach. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, may your word in Scripture, may your word among us, may your word within us be yet alive and transformative to all of us this day and always. This we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, today's message is really about how to be an attentive church in a crowded season. And now you may be wondering, who, who is that a church? The church isn't really this building, as beautiful as this building is. We're talking about you, the church. You and I, those of us following Jesus Christ, we are the church. And how can we be an attentive church or an attentive church in this season? When the life is so crowded, crowded by suffering, crowded by division, and crowded by brokenness, and so much more. Now, the scripture that Pastor Jen read so well for us is part of what, uh, 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 it's a story in the three gospels that we call the synoptic gospels. Now, the, the synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and what? Huh? And Luke, yes, you're right. The reason we call these uh, three Gospels as synoptic Gospels is because they are very similar in their content. The stories are very similar, and synopsis really means with a little bit of similarity or from the same source. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are believed to have taken their information from very similar source, and therefore they are referred in biblical studies as synoptic gospels. Now, John is not part of the synoptic gospels, though John is the fourth gospel. Now, coming to the story, we read the story. I want you to imagine this story, how it happens. Jesus crossed the river as the crowd was waiting for him. Now, as Jesus arrives and the crowd, there was a big crowd surrounding Jesus, 
there comes a man. And in the Gospel of Matthew, Ma Matthew 9, we are only told a man who is a religious leader. In other words, the man is somebody big in the religious community. And so he comes, and as he comes, people just give way. And he comes to Jesus and, and kneels down and asks God, Lord, my daughter who is 12 years old is suffering. She has been suffering uh, with, uh, with, with illness. And then if you read in Mark chapter 5, the same story, the emphasis here is on the name of the person, but also the, how big the crowd is. And so in Mark chapter 5, we are told, as Jesus approaches, there is this huge crowd. And there comes a man. And this time, this man is called Jairus. And he kneels and asks the Lord to help his suffering daughter. By the way, the daughter is 12. In Luke chapter 8, we hear the same story, and similar to Mark, the name of the person is given as Jairus. But in Luke, the connection between a 12 years old of the daughter of Jairus is also the number of years the woman among the crowd has been suffering from losing blood. And we are told that as Jesus turns to begin to go with Jairus to his house, someone touches Jesus. And Jesus turns and says, who touched me? I think the disciples are a little bit confused. Jesus, there is a big crowd. What do you mean who touched you? Knowing well what had happened, Jesus said, no, 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 no. Someone touched me. And the story goes, Jesus turned, and the woman came up and said, Lord, it's me. And Jesus looked up on her with compassion and said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Your faith has made you well. Now, those of us who are reading the story today, you are thinking, what's the big deal, Jesus? Someone touched you? Okay, that's okay. But I want to give you a little bit of the context here, okay? So this story, by the way, Matthew, Matthew's story, Matthew's believed to have been written to an audience that was very Hebrew in culture. And so in Hebrew, in the Hebrew culture, ancient Hebrew culture, to be specific, if someone is suffering from bleeding, they cannot be among people. They have to be isolated. They must be, in the world of 2020, they must be quarantined. Now, you and I know something about being quarantined, right? We went through that through, uh, during the pandemic. We, we learned something about being isolated from most people. And so in Hebrew culture, when you are suffering, when you are bleeding, you cannot be among people. You have to be put away from everybody else. You can read the culture of the Hebrew in Leviticus chapter 12, when we hear also after you've experienced bleeding, you don't, you don't just come among people. In fact, you, you were not allowed to go to worship because of your bleeding. And after that, when, before you come back, for instance, when Hebrew women gave birth because of the blood that uh, when, uh, they, they lost, they could not come back to worship. They needed to go through what was called purification period. If your child was a girl, uh, let me start with this. If your child was a boy, purification took 33 days. During those 33 days, you were not allowed to go to worship, to go among people. You were isolated from everyone else. If your child was a boy, I was a girl, 33 times 2, 66 days in isolation, quarantine. 
as you went through purification. Now, it is interesting that while someone is bleeding, if they were to touch you who, who is not bleeding, you become unclean. Now, many of you will remember the story called the Samaritan story or the good Samaritan story in Luke chapter 10, if you'll remember. There was a man laid down, and one side a priest passed by and did not want to touch that, because in case the person was dead, all they were bleeding. On the other side was a Levite. Levites were the, the chief priest. The Levite did not want to touch as well, because they were concerned should they have touched this body, and if he was bleeding, they could not continue to go lead worship. Now, imagine this is the context. Jesus was a Jew. He was a Hebrew. So he did not ignore all that was going on in the culture. Imagine now, in the crowd, Jesus said, someone touch me. Now, if it were me, I would do that quietly. I will not want to do that publicly because now everybody is, is aware that someone has touched Jesus and this someone is bleeding. Right? Something happens here with Jesus. Jesus, who is invited by the religious leader, decides, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pay attention to this woman. Most of us, when we are invited by a governor, by a king, by a queen, we will rush there and leave someone, a homeless, wanting your help. But Jesus does something different. He stops and says, who touched me? And Jesus blessed the woman who touched him. Jesus, as we are told in John, he came not so that we can brag about him, but he came to give us life and give us abundant life. This is what Jesus does for the woman who has been suffering for 12 years. By the way, something I didn't mention, you know that purification? Before you can, re you can be united with the community, a priest needed to offer a sacrifice on your behalf, but you are responsible to buy the animal to be sacrificed. Now imagine for 12 years, this woman, how many animals she has purchased. The scripture says she had used up all her resources and did not get well. Friends, I wonder for you, Personally, for you as a family, for you as a church, Chapel Hill, who are the people among you who have been suffering? Who are the people among you who have been experiencing brokenness? Maybe in relationships, maybe, maybe in, uh, they've been having illnesses. Who are the people who are suffering? Maybe they've been telling you by their silence, you have not paid attention. Who are those in suffering, in pain among you? And you have ignored, you have chosen not to pay attention to their suffering because you are so busy, because we live in this crowded life. Who among you? This is what Jesus does. Jesus said, yes, I have been called by this religious leader, but I am going to turn. I'm going to pay attention to this suffering woman. And today, I'm going to make her well. I'm going to make her well. No longer will she live in pain. No longer will she live in pain. How would you pay attention to the people around you? How will you pay attention to those who have been crying. Would you turn around and at least see them? Will you look up and say, I see you. I hear your pain. 
Will you hear their story? Jesus said, my daughter, today your faith has made you well. Today, I want to speak into your life and say, Jesus is come to make your life well. I'm going to finish this story of our preaching today by just reading a song. There is a song we, in the, we call in the faith we sing. It's called, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Hear this verse. It says, In the spirit let us travel. Open to each other's pain. Let our lives and our fears unravel. Celebrate the space we gain. There is always a place for deepest dreaming. There is a time for our hearts to care, to care. In the Spirit's lovely scheming, there is always room to spare. Sisters and brothers, is there just a little bit of time and space and room in your life to spare and care about others? God bless you all. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer, my friends. Oh God, hmm, help us to pay attention. We get so busy, so distracted, so in a hurry. Help us to learn of Jesus and look around, see those who need our attention. God, we thank you for the joys we celebrate this morning, for the breath in our lungs, <laughs> the joy of being together. God, we thank you for the joy of celebrating Hayden's baptism this morning. We pray your blessing on her. We thank you for the joy of the birth of little James Douglas Williams, son of Taylor and Zach Williams, and grandson of Kelly and Doug Ochsner, and pray your blessing on him. God, in the joys, we know there is suffering, and so we pause to pray for those who need a special touch today. We think of Reverend Charles Claycomb and Martha and their family as Charles has been in the hospital but is going home today. We pray that you would continue to bring your healing to him. We pray for Arlo and Bob Casper as they prepare to travel to the Cleveland Clinic so that Arlo can have some tests and surgery done. We pray that you would go before them and keep them safe and prepare their way. God, we pray for Donna Coonrod, Debbie Adams, Dan Smart, Harvey Depew, Larry Rapp, Sherry Wilson, Carol Davis, Ann Smith, and all of those on our prayer list, as well as those we name now in the stillness of our own hearts. Thank you, O oh God, that you know each and every person, each and every story in that assurance. <laughs> in that assurance, O oh God, as we turn to the giving of our tithes and our offerings, we ask that you receive all that is given, even more receive our lives, that we might glorify you with each breath we take. For we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. As the ushers come forward to wait upon the congregation, I invite you to find the connection folders. They'll be on the center aisle of each row. Inside, you'll find a way to let us know that you're here, and that matters. We want to be able to connect with you. 
You'll also find prayer request cards. We love to pray with and for you. You can put those in the baskets or give them to a pastor. Thank you for that beautiful music. Thank you indeed. Uh, friends, I now enjoy, invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord's be with you. Also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give to, thanks to the Lord our God. It is right indeed and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so we join our voices to all the company of, he of heaven as together we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. I said, it's he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heart. On the night in which Jesus gave up himself, as our Lord took bread, broke it, and gave it to all his friends and said, take and eat. This is my body that is given for each one of you. Do this as often as you, you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, God, and gave it to everyone and said, drink from this. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. 
that we, your people, may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All glory, honor, and praise is yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, as children of God, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, what's in heaven, hallowed be the name. The kingdom come, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Friends, as you come for communion, Front rows of each section will start by coming out to your right hand side and you will go to the communion in front of your section. If you need gluten free, it will be at the back and just ask the ushers, they'll help you. A communion server will give you a piece of bread and you'll dip it into the cup. If that's not comfortable for you, just ask, you'll be given a little cup that you can have individual cup. Now I invite you to come, come as you are. This is an open table, come. Oh, 
Thank you, praise team. What a blessing. All right, a couple of announcements for you this morning. First of all, a huge thank you, because look at that. We not only met the goal, we surpassed it for Operation Backpack. So kudos. What a gift. What a gift. So in August, we have another way to be a blessing to our community. We're hosting a hygiene drive, and you have probably seen there are barrels all around the church. There's also a way to give financially if you'd rather do it that way. But any hygiene-type product that it's hard to get a hold of if you're struggling to make ends meet, I invite you to bring those donations in throughout August. I also want to let you know, it's, I don't know how it's time for back to school, but it is. Third grade Bible class is preparing to start. So if you have a third grader in your life, a third grade child, a third grade grandchild, a third grade neighbor, we would love for you to register them to receive a Bible from Chapel Hill so that we can pray for them and bless them in that way. Dr. Moore asked me to let you know that choir is starting up again. The first choir rehearsal will be August the 14th, and here's the qualifications. Okay, are you ready? You have to love to sing. That's it. Come and make a joyful noise. The choir is a fun group of people, and it is such a blessing to have their music in our worship service each week. I will be at the cross praying with those who stand in need of prayer, so please seek me out if you would like to. And one final point you probably saw in the newsletter this week that it is our beloved Brianna's last Sunday as our praise team pianist. We are very sad for us, but we are excited for Brianna as she goes to live into that calling to be a licensed master social work therapist and working with a suicide prevention organization in the community. So she's doing amazing work, and she promises she'll come see us every once in a while. So let's give her our love one more time. Thank you, Thank you so much. Bless you, friend. And now I want to invite you to stand as you're able as Chali comes to give us our benediction. Hello, people of God. May the blessings of our God who sees all our suffering and pays attention flow within you as a river of life. May you drink deep God's wisdom. May you go through life refreshing many as a sign of healing for all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let us all go in peace. Amen. Go with the wind at your side.
your back and the sun on your face with a song in your heart and the promise of grace go in peace and in truth and let love lead your way go Go with God. Go 